Okay, a lesson in electrostatics. We know that electrostatics is a study of positive and negative charges. Positive charge is going to be made up of a lack of electrons. So there'll be more protons in an object than electrons, therefore giving it a negative charge. We may also have a negative charge. For simplicity's sake right now, we'll speak of a single charge, a proton, and an electron. We know that charges can attract or repel by placing them in proximity to one another. A positive charge will repel another positive charge and attract a negative. Similarly, a negative charge will attract a positive charge and repel a negative. So like charges repel and unlike charges attract. We cannot see the means by which charges attract, so we call it a field. A field is drawn with lines as such and an electric field around an electron something like this. We need to indicate the difference between the field around a proton and the field around an electron. The difference is, is that the field around a proton will repel a positive test charge brought near. So if I brought a positive test charge being the end of my pen towards this, it will experience a force away from that positive charge. A positive test charge being brought near this electron it will experience in a force towards that electron. So the field lines are given direction based upon the direction that the force will act on a positive test charge brought near. Now both of these have the same number of lines. If I wanted to indicate that one had a stronger electric field than another, I would add more lines. These are the same because we have, in this case, an electron and a proton, both of which have the same basic charge. Now, if I'm going to examine the electric field, I recognize that it is proportional in strength to its charge. The electric field is proportional in strength to Coulomb's constant. and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the charge. And we have the equation which describes the magnitude of the electric field. We indicate that it's a, a vector by putting the symbol of a vector over top of the electric field. And now I have a formula for calculating the strength of an electric field at any point around a charged object. There are three types of examples you may end up encountering with this equation. One is just straight for a single charge. Single charge may ask you what is the strength of the electric field and its direction at a point x distance away from the charge. The strength of the field is dependent on this equation alone. And if I evaluate... Dad, do you want to see this? Yeah, I sure do. Hold on a sec. Uh, focus, focus. Focus, focus. Hold on a sec there, Mr. Focus, focus. Okay, let me see. What do you got? Focus, focus. What? Hold on a second. Watch this. Dad. Hold the hold the hold. No, hold Dad, me... watch this. Watch hold this. on, hold on. Okay. No, okay, we'll show her this camera right here. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah, just hold it right there. That's good. Just hold it right there. What do you got? Abracadabra. Ooh, abracadabra. Hold on. Okay, there's no card in there. Okay, now close it back up. Let's see. Hold this. Focus, focus. Focus, focus. Ooh, wow, what the heck? 
Where'd you get that magic? Smoke. Holy smokes. That's some good magic right there. Ooh, impressive. All right, a little interlude with the magic there. Okay, uh, this symbol, recall, means evaluating at x, and its x is going to be equal to the r in this equation, and I end up getting that the electric field and magnitude equals k times the charge itself over x squared. Its direction is dependent on whether or not the charge is negative or positive. If positive, the direction is away. If negative, direction is toward. If I had two charges, or two charged objects, and I'm asked what is the field at a point P between the charges, I'm going to just call this one arbitrarily a positive charge, and I'll call this one I'll call this one a negative charge. And I want to find a point in between the two charges at point P. Then the electric field is going to be at point P is going to equal the sum of the electric fields from charge 1, which I will say this one is charge 1, plus the electric field from charge 2. Now these are vectors, so therefore their sum may be an additive quality by magnitude or a subtractive, depending on the direction. Now before I get into talking about magnitude, I can look at this and say I know at point P, the field due to charge 1 is going to be pointing in that direction. And the field due to charge 2 will also be pointing in that direction. I'm just arbitrarily choosing the sizes of these vectors. This is going to indicate to me already, I know, regardless of the sign of the fields, I will have to add them together, their magnitude, and this, the direction of that field I will simply state as being towards Q2 or away from Q1. In magnitude, This gives us kq1 over the distance from 1 to p squared plus kq2 over the distance from charge 2 to the point p squared. Now when we go to find this sum, we ignore the signs of the charges. We do this because we already know what direction it's pointing, this sum field. It's either going to be stated as pointing towards Q2 or pointing to the right or pointing away from Q1. All those statements are equivalent and we know we have to add the two fields together because of our drawing here, so we ignore the signs. We simply sum the magnitudes and then we state its direction as an addition. The other type of problem we may have with multiple charges is we could have three charges. There are two possible orientations we might look at for this, one of which are just charges on a line. I'm going to arbitrarily choose the sign of these charges. This choice is so that I can get you to think about what direction the field is going to point. I will choose a point, say, here, point P, calling this charge 1, charge 2, charge 3. And when I say arbitrarily cho choosing the name of these points, 
or these charges, it doesn't matter what, uh, when, which one I call Q1, which one I call Q3, because I know that the sum of these is going to look a particular way depending on the sign of those charges. So from Q1, I have a field pointing in this direction. Q2 has a field also pointing in this direction. Q3 has its field pointing in the opposite direction. I am arbitrarily choosing the length of the vectors which represent these fields. What their magnitudes are will become clear when I find the total field at point P due to the three different fields. Now I'm going to call the fields pointing to the right positive, so I add those fields together. I will subtract the field due to charge 3 because I know it's pointing left. Now if the sign of the answer ends up being a negative, I know that E3 provided more field strength than the other two charges combined at that point. But whatever the case, it will become clear when I put in the magnitudes of each of the values of the charges and the distance from them. So this is a straight in line orientation. I could have all positive charges. I could have point P anywhere here in between or on the outside, but the process will be exactly the same. I will ignore the sign of those charges when I'm finding what direction or what the magnitude of the field is. I will simply consider the direction those fields are going to point, and I will use that direction to determine what sign I'm going to give each one of those fields. The other orientation I may have with three charges will involve trigonometry.